What is up guys? Welcome back to another low level learning tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be checking out the deep sleep functionality of the RP2040 and see how low we can get the power consumption of our chip. So the first thing we have to do is baseline the RP2040. The way we're gonna do that is we're going to run this program here to the board and see how much power it consumes just doing tight loop contents. If you didn't know, tight loop contents is literally just a no-op operation in C. So if you look here in the actual implementation in the Pico SDK, uh, there is no code here at all. It doesn't do anything. So this is a no-op operation happening infinitely. So in theory, the only instructions that get ran are your jump and your no-op, and that's it. So we got to see how much power does a Pi Pico use by default and see if we can get that number lower. So what we're going to do here is we will export our two paths here. We will make the program. We will copy it over to the device and you'll see here on the right. So currently the Pi Pico is consuming this many volts at this many amps, which means that it is consuming this many watts of power. So that's our baseline. We need to do things now in our code that beat this number. So my first thoughts on how we're gonna accomplish this is we are going to put the device to sleep. And we can literally do that with the sleep MS function. The idea being that maybe if I just put it to sleep with the sleep function, it'll go into a, a lower state of execution and use less power. So let's build this real quick. And we'll copy it over. Yeah, and you'll see here the results are pretty disappointing, actually. We lose a little bit of current, which means that the power has gone down a little bit, but we're still pulling in the same amount of power as just no opping in a loop. So you got to ask, why does that happen? Well, let's dive into the instructions of the actual sleep code and see how that works. So here we are in the Pico SDK. Uh, we're actually at the code that executes the sleep MS function. Um, sleep MS is just sleep milliseconds, and it ends up just calling sleep microseconds with your time times a thousand. If you go to the sleep microseconds function that is just a sleep until function if alarm pools are not disabled which they're not by default and then if you actually go into the code uh, after a couple checks get done to see if you've gotten to the point where you should be done sleeping um, the, the code is just the wfe micro instruction which is a, an assembly instruction in c um, and wfe is just wait for event which executes as a nop on the target so again, our sleep functionality, which you would think gives you lower power consumption, faster code execution while sleeping. No, it's just an op. Now, when I was making this video, I was starting to get really disappointed because I felt like there was no code in the Pico SDK library that actually implemented the deep sleep functionality of the ARM Cortex processor. Um, but then in looking around, I discovered that Raspberry Pi put out this extra library literally called Pico Extras. Um, and it exports this sleep interface. And the sleep interface has some functionality. One of them is a sleep go to sleep until where you can specify a real time counter alarm um, and a callback to execute once the alarm has gone off. And within this API, they actually use the deep sleep functionality of the processor. And you'll see here in a second, the power consumption is significantly lower. So basically what this code does here, I'll kind of walk y'all through it. We turn the processor on, it is not awake. We put it into real-time clock sleep. We basically say that this is the date now, and then we say that this is the time we want to wake up, which is just this previous date 10 seconds later. Uh, we initialize the real-time clock, and then we set the date time to the time we say it is, and then we say, go to sleep until this alarm goes off, and when it goes off, execute the sleep callback. The sleep callback just says the global variable awake is true, and what that does for us is that means that we should never get here because we should be sleeping until we are awake, and then we go into tight loop contents. So what you're gonna see is we have 10 seconds of low power consumption, and then after that 10 seconds is up, when we come out of sleep, the power consumption jumps way up, and we'll show you that real quick. So let's build this and put it onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. Okay, so once the power supply starts up, you can see right here, we have extremely low power consumption over cut in half. And then after 10 seconds has elapsed, boom, knocks all the way up and goes into tight loop contents and goes back to where we were before. So we can go a little bit better than this. This is just sleeping on a timer. When the timer goes off, it wakes up. There's one more piece of code that it actually exports where we are able to go dormant until a rising clock edge hits a Raspberry Pi Pico. And I think that's the most useful for people that are waiting on edges like UART, SPY, or I2C. And the way that we do that is with this code right here. Let's walk through it line by line. So line 10 and 11, pretty standard. Uh, line 13, we're gonna initialize the LED pin so that we can see when we've come out of sleep. So when the sleep expires, the LED comes on. 
Um, and then we want to set the direction of the wake pin and the wake pin is the pin that we're waiting for input on gpio in and then the direction of the output pin obviously to be an output pin this line here line number 18 is extremely crucial and you cannot ignore this line so this says sleep run from external oscillator what this line does is it puts the processor into a mode that it can go into what's called dormant mode so to be able to go into dormant mode you basically have to be running from a clock source that you can stop and you have to turn off all external subsystems that depend on a clock. By calling this function, we bring the power consumption of the processor down by disabling those subsystems. Then, line 20, sleep, go to dormant until edge high. We bring the processor to an even lower state and wait for a clock edge to rise on the wake pin, which in this case is pin 10. And once that happens, so line 20, the program will freeze. Once it comes out of sleep, meaning we've received a clock edge on pin 10, the light will go on and then we'll go into tight loop contents. Tight loop contents will actually not be the same power consumption as it was the 0.29 amps because we've disabled so many of the subsystems on the processor. But the time before that, when we're in dormant sleep, we will be at an extremely low power consumption, true deep sleep on the RP2040. So let's build it and check it out. All right, so as you can see here, we turn on the Raspberry Pi Pico with the power supply. It begins with 0 0.002 amps or two milliamps, and then we hit the clock edge and it goes up to four milliamps. So we have the Raspberry Pi Pico down at 6.6 .6 milliwatts. So guys, look how far we came. We started out at nearly 100 milliwatts operating the Raspberry Pi Pico in an infinite loop. That's one tenth of a watt. That is actually a significant amount of power. Now, using deep sleep code, we are able to get the Raspberry Pi Pico down to 6.6 .6 milliwatts in deep sleep. Hopefully, this is useful to you guys. Um, if it was, and if you learned something, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment with your latest RP2040 project. Guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.